Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode 262 of Ask Dave. Today is Sunday and we're continuing our daily uh, uh, special for those who are quarantined, locked inside. A little something to bring some cheer and to talk about ham radio and to uh, keep our spirits up. Today I'm going to answer a question that was asked uh, yesterday's live stream about my uh, solar system. I have a photovoltaic system. Note that that is not the reference power supply. The reference power supply is the Samlex SEC1235M. And, uh, but I also have a photovoltaic power supply that I have been using for 22, 23 years. So I thought I'd go through some slides to show the photovoltaic supply and how it works with the, the uh, panels, the charge controllers, the batteries, um, the boost controller and all that type of thing to provide a basically unlimited power source for my station. I have figured out that even with a 30 or 40 watt panel I have plenty of power to basically run my station continuously. Right at the moment I happen to have a 250 watt panel out there. Panels are getting very inexpensive. You can buy them for less than a dollar a watt. If you go to your local uh, solar supplier and there are quite a few in the area. Ideally you'd want a 12 volt panel but uh, about what's available these days are 24 volt panels. 250 watts, I paid about $225 for it, and it's a very fine panel. Make sure that it's the kind that just provides the DC power output and doesn't have a built-in inverter or anything like that, because that's designed for, you know, a home-style, uh, full solar backup kinds of things, uh, whereas we're looking for something for ham radio. So let's uh, jump in and take a look. The solar panel that's laying on the ground there is the one that is active at the moment. That is a 250 watt 24 volt panel and is the one actually connected into the solar system. Uh, to the side there you see a 50 watt panel facing out. Uh, that's a 12 volt panel, perfectly good panel. The one behind it, however, is uh, not a good panel. We get a little bit closer look at this 250 watt panel. It is rather large um, and it's interesting. I actually got this for less than a dollar a watt uh, from a local uh, solar uh, provider that uh, puts in house sized uh, projects. It's a 24 volt panel which leads to some interesting considerations. This is how it is connected just with Anderson power pole connectors. Uh, you can see it's been out in the weather. The little steel uh, pin in the center is rusted and you can see that the copper has corroded in there, but that uh, plug still works fine. I had the previous uh, one all beautifully um, watertight, but uh, um, oh well, <laughs> it, it works. Summer's coming. Uh, this is the 50 watt panel. Um, it's a nice panel. I bought this new, I think from Evergreen Solar, many years ago. And uh, it's a 12 volt panel. Uh, the one behind it is a 100 volt panel and I had it down in Quartzfest, uh, both their way in 2019. And it fell over. And this is what happened to the surface of it. Uh, the surface is tempered glass and all it takes is one crack and the whole surface crazes over. And as you can probably figure out, although the underlying cells are intact, the crazing on the surface causes a lot of the light not to reach the panel and the efficiency of this 100 watt panel went way down and uh, does not put out much at all. It's uh, as good as junk. Uh, this is the solar charge controller that I use. I got it from BioNO Power at the last 2019 uh, Dayton Hamvention. BioNO is selling a lot of things to uh, the ham radio community. Uh, it will take inputs of 12 through 48 volts 
And it says for lithium iron phosphate batteries only, but actually it works with all different kinds of batteries and I reprogrammed it to use it with my lead acid. One of the nice things about it is it will take 24 volts in and that battery of course can actually go up to close to 36 volts, that, that panel rather. Uh, and it will regulate it down for the 12 volt battery that it is charging. This is a pulse width modulation so I'm actually leaving a lot of power on the table. Uh, however, that is such a big batter, uh, big solar panel, it's overkill for my uh, system. Uh, this is the box that it came in. Um, you see it says designed for lithium ion because this is the box that BioNO sells it in, but I did go very carefully through the programming and uh, set it back for lead acid. Um, and one of the reasons I got it is because I can use it for lithium ion if I ever go in that direction. It'll take up to 48 volts in at 30 amps. Um, and uh, like I said, it's charging a 12 volt battery and it's perfectly happy to do that. This is the uh, channel itself. It is showing that the battery is being held at a float voltage. Uh, battery is fully charged and is floating at 13.4 volts. Every so often as I use the battery, it will um, need to get a bulk charge again, and so it'll let it uh, charge up to about 14.1 uh, volts in there. Now you'll note at the bottom of the terminals, there's terminals for the panel, terminals for the battery, and terminals for the load. My load, however, can exceed 30 amps, so I take the load directly off of the batteries. By yes, those are USB uh, uh, chargers that you can use to charge your phone or iPad or whatever. This is my main battery bank. Those are huge uh, deep cycle batteries designed specifically for solar uh, service. Uh, you'll, they're in series parallel. They're 6 volt batteries. So up across the top those two are in series. Down in the bottom those two are in series. and I've got them cross connected at the midpoint. Uh, none of the wiring going in or out of the box is greater than 12 gauge and it's fused uh, for I think about 30 amps uh, in there. Make sure everything is fused. Now I do something interesting here. You'll note that there's two uh, red cables coming in. One is for charging and one is for um, uh, the load and I've got them set up. If, if, a, if you don't do this sort of thing, when a, uh, there are failure modes where the charge or where the, the, um, where the charge controller doesn't see a battery and you have the uh, uh, solar panel going directly to the load without the intermediation of the battery which can cause quite a bit of damage to equipment and so on. So I take the charging leads all the way to the terminals in the battery and then take the discharge leads from the same place so that they're uh, to reduce the failure modes where you might uh, uh, lose contact with the battery. This is the battery box when it's closed up. I'm not the world's greatest builder but I will tell you that thing is strong as an ox. It's on very heavy casters. Uh, those uh, batteries that I just mentioned, we'll go back to them for a minute, are um, um, absorbed glass mat sealed batteries. And uh, that means that um, they won't emit hydrogen under normal conditions and so on. So I built this to put them in. I had to move them out of the basement because we constructed a bathroom down there. So it's not near as far from the ham shack as it used to be. My wife uh, put a blanket over the top of it so officially it's a place to sit. Um, and then there is the uh, controller on top of it there. This is the battery that actually runs the station. Sometimes in solar terms this is called a relay battery and uh, this sits directly under the power distribution panel for my ham station uh, with a very short cable that you can see there and this uh, battery is also charged uh, from the main battery there's just 12 gauge wire in between them but that's enough that over time it will level out the voltage and thus level out the charge 
the battery that's in here is a Walmart uh, marine type uh, battery. Uh, it has the same lead acid uh, chemistry as my main batteries, so they can be connected directly in parallel. And as this battery right here will start to go down, it will draw recharging current from that main battery uh, out there. This has worked this way for years. This is the actual very blurry picture of my uh, power distribution system. It's got 12 slots there. It's made by uh, West Mountain Radio, I believe. And um, now let me show you a couple additional charge controllers I have. This is one I had high hopes for. This is a maximum PowerPoint tracker uh, made from SolarLand, same outfit. Well, I got this at the same place at Last to Solar in uh, Grand Junction, uh, Colorado. And it's a maximum PowerPoint tracking, and you can put 24 in and charge a 12 volt battery with it in theory. Uh, what happened is see, this is rated maximum PowerPoint tracker, can take 24 volts in and will auto sense whether it's dealing with a 12 volt or a 24 volt battery. Uh, unfortunately, um, it sometimes loses track and the battery voltage starts to creep up a little bit. And at 15 volts, I get an alarm from the power distribution system. And that's way too high. So um, I've taken this one out of service, pending understanding it better. This other uh, charge controller right here is a, 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 a pulse width modulator. This is designed specifically for RVs. And it is 12 volts in and 12 volts out. So it's specifically designed for that. And uh, I can take one of my 12 volt panels, like that 50 water out there, take, us, take that with us as we go to uh, camping places and so on to help keep the battery charged uh, in uh, our travel trailer. This is what the back of it looks like. It's designed for a more mobile environment and I went ahead and put on uh, nice uh, connectors on it here and there. You note there's a little um, RG45 socket there that's got a different uh, ID but anyway it's for a, a battery monitor uh, and so on. Now this right here is an essential piece of gear for certain radios. I had no trouble feeding uh, my Tentec Jupiter directly from the battery, but as soon as I got my Yesu FTDX 3000, I started having trouble. As it turns out, the FTDX 3000, which is common with some of the uh, higher end rigs, uh, takes 13.8 volts plus or minus 10%. Well, if you take 1.38 away from 13.8, you don't get down to 12 volts. And the batteries will go, uh, when the batteries are half charged, they're at 12 volts. And they'll go up to 12.7 when they're fully charged. And I started to have trouble with the um, FTDX 3000 uh, with the unpredictable behavior. So I picked this up, uh, the N8 XJK Boost Regulator, which takes uh, anywhere from 10 to 12 volts in and puts 13.8 out. So uh, the radio is very happy and the solar system is happy. Everything is happiness all the way around. Now, unfortunately, N8 XJK passed away, but um, West Mountain Radio has picked up his controller. Note that it is repackaged. Okay, it is uh, got a couple more indicator uh, LEDs and so on, and uh, it is available. It's 250 bucks, uh, which is about what I paid for the uh, one direct. Um, there's also a similar product available from MFJ, the 4416C, and this is the battery booster, and it will provide. Um, the 13.8 uh, to uh, a radio. We have one of these in our club trailer uh, for when we do field day and so on. So that kind of quickly summarizes uh, my solar setup here from uh, photovoltaic all the way to the battery booster for the radio.
I've been piddling around with solar power for a long time. I wrote an article for QST in 1997 about solar power uh, and uh, still is something that is of great interest to me. So maybe this is something you can do too. My uh, article provides a lot more instructions on how to do things and a lot has changed. Uh, when I wrote the article, uh, solar panels were about $5 a watt. Now they're down to less than a dollar a watt. So things have changed. Battery technology has changed. BioNO sells lithium ion batteries uh, that are great for a solar system. They need a different charge controller uh, or a different program in the charge controller for it. So now let's see what is coming up this week. I'm going to take a look at that DXEE antenna from Alpha Delta and see if I can't get a, that all tuned up in the general single sideband uh, part of 40 meters. And I've got a few other things on the burner too. So time to toot my own horn, please go to decastlercom slash support and look at different ways that you can provide financial support for this channel. A one-time tip, um, a subscription via PayPal through Patreon, which is very nice because they keep in touch and, and all that sort of thing. And uh, also I have the thumb drives for the um, Technician General and Extra. And uh, I've even got a page full of uh, Amazon advertisements that if you uh, pick up something through that, you can, uh, you end up, uh, I get a little finder's fee for that. Also, be sure to click uh, like and subscribe. Subscribing makes you an Augie, so be sure to subscribe. And that is the end of my horn tooting. So, until we next meet, 73.